Hey Adventure Machine subscribers, um, working on the uh, Mega Squirt <clears throat> modifications, um, and taking this board, which is a Mega Squirt two on a three O board, and which came with the car, but um, it was originally set up to just run fuel, which is the most basic configuration. Um, and I am wanting to change that. So it's, I've got coil unplug. Um, these coils don't have drivers in them. Um, so they will require, uh, um, buried back in the corner here, I've got some these guys, some packages of, of some different ICs, um, and drivers, um, so initially I was thinking, well, I'll just put Q16 in because Q16 is actually not installed currently, um, which normally would go right there. Um, it wasn't set up for that. Um, however, this guy was added, which is pulse width modulation driver for the um, intake air control or the idle air control. Um, it did have these current limiting resistors in place here and here. Um, I've pulled those initially thinking, well, I'm just going to put uh, one of the BIP drivers, one here, one here, and one here, um, and then bridge these uh, to replace the resistor. So one of the, the Q16 would go here and then the the legs of this would go up into flying leads similar to this. But, I, I guess I can't leave well enough alone. Um, I have coil on plug. I could run this wasted spark um, with three drivers inside the enclosure. Um, and it would run, um, and I could maintain the the two injector drivers running batch fuel, and it would run. Um, but I also have a cam position sensor, um, which can allow the MS2 to effectively go into a sequential mode, um, which expands the capability of tuning. Um, so these are my basic requirements at this point in time. Coil on plug for six spark plugs, crank trigger input, cam position sensor input, uh, intake air control for two wire. I still want to maintain the can low and high and I want the ECU to run the fan controls on and off. And I also had, need to add a pulse width modulation control for the boost control solenoid. And to do that, there's a bunch of modifications that need to happen. So, I quickly drew out a rough diagram. This represents a bit controller, um, basically a, a high current switching uh, transistor. And I was going to build a circuit. Um, but actually there's a company out there that makes a four channel um, on a board and everything else so I'm, I'm basically just going to buy two of those boards and put three drivers on each board um, and not mess with it. They're fairly cheap. So I could have a driver driver board for the coils but that also means that if I'm going to go full sequential on the spark plug, or the spark, that means that I need to go with spark A, B, C, 
D, E, and F, which means all of these modifications need to happen. So I can get six separate spark channels, um, which over here I only have effectively one spare at this point. Not even quite that, honestly, because I mean I could tap into the um, stepper motor ports, and I might do that, but this one is currently doing the fan control for a relay for the span con fan control. Um, this would be the last spare, this spare three. The can high and low are on these two spares. So what that means is that on this end of the board, I'm going to have to come up with a connector to get all of these plus some out of the box. Um, so that's one of the challenges. The other challenge is so to make these modifications for um, not only for the spark, but I also want to do um, semi sequential on the injection. Um, and this, the Mega Squirt 2 is only capable of doing semi sequential for six. Uh, injectors, so basically I'm going to have to pair two injectors together. As it stands right now, I only have two injector channels um, and it's batching three injectors simultaneously. So the best I can do with this controller is batch two injectors. Um, it's There's not another... I need a basically a, a uh, another channel actually no I need I would need um, two more channels to do full sequential injection and it's it's not capable of doing it so I have to go semi sequential on the injection but if I go full sec full spark channel single spark channel per coil then I get the ability to um, have a uh, igni ignition map for every um, cylinder and with this engine um, the cylinder 5 and somewhat cylinder 6 tends to run a little bit hotter and therefore you typically want to pull the ignition back on cylinder 5 because cylinder 5 is typically the one that detonates and blows the shit out of everything. So, um, I have, get closer here, Ow. if it will let me, alright, there. So I've started removing um, these components because you don't need, this is a clock circuit for the MS1 so that I can do these modifications to um, this board and those, those modifications are not present but I need to do basically that to that. So that gets um, the additional, the two additional injector channels um, down to the main board, um, and then there's some modifications that need to happen here and some wires and stuff. Um, the biggest challenge is going to be the connector that needs to go out through the the body. Um, there's not a whole lot of room. Um, the typical solution is you basically abandon these LEDs right here and you put some form of a connector through this, this face, face plate. Um, I have a connector from all of my collections of crap 
and it's a bulkhead style fitting and wire sizes are a little big but not terrible but the problem is need too big just a little too big so I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do um, getting this DB9 off of the PCB without destroying things is gonna be difficult um, and then I'd have to replace it with something because that's how you, that's the serial interface to com communicate to the board um, but and the other pieces that I basically had to not do is I have a knock sensor but I can't do a knock sensor and do Spark D um, or the um, I think it's Spark D or the second trigger input because I just I'm running out of inputs. Um, so if I can't do the second trigger input, which is basically the cam sensor, then I can't go sequential. So I'm just going to um, probably run the knock sensor standalone and just have it run a light. Um, so, yeah, lots going on, lots to try and figure out, several different modifications that I'll try and um, actually run detailed video on what those modifications are, how to do it, because it's been one of my major challenges is I want to do X, Y, Z, what modifications do I need to do? and getting a clear understanding of how to do it and where to do it. Um, my The alternative is I spend a bunch of money and replace this computer with a computer that will actually do all of it, but um, it's money I don't necessarily want to spend right now, and this will do the majority of what I need it to do, and so yeah and it's a bit of a challenge so anyway uh, that's about what I've got as far as an update um, so there you have it enjoy <laughs>